What up, HyperChange? Tesla Q224 earnings are hot off the press. Just got off the conference call. We are going to dive into all the financial results here, and then we're going to talk about what happened on the conference call. Tesla, still my biggest investment, one of the most fascinating case studies to follow. So now let's dive into the numbers they reported. Zoom in here on revenue, $25.5 in the quarter, all-time record for Tesla, over $100 billion run right now for the overall business. But as you can see, kind of been flatlining. But there was some positivity. If we dive into the derivative here, looking at the year-over-year -year numbers, Tesla's revenue uh, in Q1 was down 9% year-over-year, but here in Q2 is actually resumed to growth of 2.3%. So there's the headline number, 25.5 billion in revenue, 2.3% year-over-year growth. Tesla's gonna have to accelerate that growth rate if they wanna continue to be this awesome superstar company. They will, but I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, this is much slower than Tesla's grown in the past. If Tesla's growth rate has slowed to about this level you know this has happened before where the growth kind of flatlines but then it picks up dramatically uh for a long time so we may be in kind of one of these lulls of tesla's revenue growth which may accelerate as they launch their new vehicle platform which i'm going to talk about in a little bit moving on to gross profit uh gross profit big bounce back 4.6 billion in the quarter up from 3.7 billion last quarter year over year about flat actually up one percent so that was actually another big positivity there a big swing back uh for the gross margin or gross profit of the company up one percent year over year in q1 it was down 18 percent year over year so awesome to see the business stabilizing uh and these key metrics bouncing back into the growth territory if we go into operating income operating income was 1.61 billion in profit for the quarter if we annualize that that's 6.4 billion uh tesla's market capitalization right now is around 850 800 billion so the p ratio is about 120 we're gonna dive into that more based on this quarter's earnings so a lot of growth is being priced in um, this was up from 1.17 billion last quarter. So awesome to see that bounce back. Also, it's like, I don't even know, 12, 15 quarters of profitability in a row for Tesla. They haven't been unprofitable since mid-2019. So the company that was always struggling for cash that nobody said would ever make it has now been profitable for four plus five years, almost five years in a row. And a bad quarter for them is 1.61 billion in profit. So I think it's, you always got to remember how much, how far Tesla's came. And you can also see the cyclicality of the business here. When interest rates are low, um, when production is booming, they're maximizing output, car vehicle prices are high, they're going to be able to pump out three or four, five billion in earnings in a quarter. But then cyclically, when interest rates go back up, the earnings get depressed. But really what you're seeing here is this, it's a it's an uptrend like this that's going up to the right, but there's lots of variations with the cyclicality of the auto business. That's That's my interpretation of it. Um, if we scroll down more looking at the financials, let's zoom into cash flow here. Uh, Tesla's cash flow bounced back with 3.6 billion cash flow from operations. That's a lot of money they made. Uh, they spent 2.27 billion of that on capital expenditures, aka investments for future growth. We're talking AI, robotics. So CapEx still looking pretty high here, but they're making more money than their CapEx. Therefore, they get free cash flow, 1.34 billion added to the bank. This is why Tesla is... It's so important to take a step back of saying this company has been capital constrained every single year of its existence. Tesla has been capital constrained uh, for so long. They were always like pinching pen pennies on cash, but now they actually have 30 billion, 31 billion almost in cash, a record. They're producing billions in cash, extra money every quarter. Uh, the company's never been more financially sound, giving them the ability to think long term, invest in things. It's just a very, it's a position of strength on the balance sheet that I think is extremely important and will continue as these cash flow numbers are so strong. Now, let's dive into the KPIs here. There's one thing I want to highlight in particular, and that is Tesla's diversification of its revenue into other segments. In this quarter, we had 10% of uh, revenue come from services here, 2.61 billion. Then we had 12% of revenue, 3 billion come from energy. So that, and that's, uh, so now, so, and Tesla's auto business was about 20 billion. So. I think this is a very interesting diversification here, and you can see in this chart beautifully how services and other and energy are now over 22% of Tesla's revenue, and the company is diversifying away from that cyclical and low margin automotive business. So this is very promising and should give Tesla's earnings a much higher multiple. Now, if we zoom in on the energy business in particular, you can see how much of an insanely monster quarter this was. And the, the factory from Shanghai to build these mega pack batteries that are stabilizing the grid 
that is driving this growth in this business, that hasn't even opened and won't till Q1 2025. This is still ramping from the first factory. So my point is we are in the early stage of a five-year, maybe 10-year, maybe 15-year growth in Tesla's energy business. Three billion a quarter is 12 billion a year. This is already a 12 billion a year business. If I think if it were a standalone company, it'd be worth at least 100 billion. So Tesla's energy business, when you think about Tesla's a collection of startups, it's easy to gloss over that analogy, but look at one of the startups they started, you know, almost eight or nine years ago, Tesla Energy. That startup is now a $12 billion revenue business, billions in earnings, hundreds of billions of market cap potential. Well, that's just an example of a seed Tesla planted eight years ago. Since then, they have all these other seeds that they planted, Tesla Semi Truck, uh, like the robo taxi business, Optimus, that haven't come to fruition on the financials yet, but will. And are confidence in those sort of moonshots and startups transitioning into strong financial contributors for the company, that confidence is increasing as they show they can do it with energy. So I just think this is an incredible validation of Tesla being more than a car company. And let's dive even further than that, because it's not just revenue that I think is so interesting um, about energy. It's the gross profit. So here we're going to dive into gross profit by segment. And as you can see, this is also becoming a huge chunk of not only Tesla's revenue, but profitability. And so energy and storage plus with services is almost producing a billion dollars combined, 900 million or so in gross incremental gross profit per quarter. So 4 billion per year in incremental gross profit coming from energy and services and other growing at maybe 50 to 100 percent. I mean, it, it's it's really, really exciting to not just see the revenue growth, but the, the profitability from these sides of the businesses um, come to fruition. So. Now I want to talk a little bit about my notes here on the conference call. Um, I'll tell y'all what my biggest takeaways were. Elon Musk, high level conference call was a lot more boring than expected. Elon seemed a bit distracted, a little frustrated, calm, composed, but... Um, I think his biggest takeaway is he is laser focused on FSD. Twice during the call, he mentioned that ARK Invest has a $5 trillion price target uh, or valuation of Tesla's full self-driving. He thinks it could be even higher than that. So Elon Musk is saying, if, and he says on the conference call, you should not own Tesla stock if you don't believe that we're going to solve FSD. If you think we can solve it, you should own it. But he's not trying to convince you. So, and and actually, I want to tie into my important point here on this whole video here. This is my Canva slide of Tesla's valuation. So I think this is so interesting because if you buy, and this is at 246 per share. So Tesla after hours is already coming down a little bit. But Tesla at 246 per share is worth $860 billion of market cap. 2 246 per share, 3.5 billion shares, $860 billion. That is the price you're buying into Tesla as of the market close. My projection for 2024 revenue, about $110 billion. 2024 profits, about $7 billion. And if we do the math on the price sales ratio of $110 billion, uh, you know, 860 divided by 110, 7.8 price sales ratio. That 860 divided by 7 billion in profits, 123 price earnings ratio. So the point is here, the S&P 500 is trading at 15 or 20 multiple. Tesla's only growing 2%. You cannot maintain 100x PE ratio growing 2%. So what is the market telling you right now? The market is telling you that it believes Tesla is going to significantly increase these earnings and revenue and is pricing in a massive increase. And this is what why Tesla to me is one of the most fascinating companies of all time. We have never seen a company that's this big have so much optionality priced in. Whenever you get to the size of a trillion dollars, one of the largest company in the world, you're at a more mature level of profits. The company is going to get valued at 20 to 30 to 40 times revenue. Maybe the only other company that's bucked this trend is Amazon. And Amazon did a very interesting thing where they reinvested all their excess revenue and profits into growing the business at sort of this break neck pace and showed basically no profitability, at least on their gap income statement for years, but was a continually rising in valuation. And this had a lot of skeptics baffled of like this hundred PE ratio. Why does it make sense? Well, you know, a stock, a company's valuation is, is a set of discounted future expectations. And I think Tesla is baffling the market because it's not a mature business like Google or Apple, uh, where you could value it at 20 to 30, 40 times, you know, it's growing a certain amount. They have these massive sort of moonshots that are either massively changing the value of the company, growing it five times or 10 times or more, or will never work and won't produce anything. I'm talking about FSD and Optimus. And so the market 
is grappling with this, saying Tesla's automotive business that can do seven billion in annual earnings now when you know high interest rates and EV sales are down, maybe twenty billion in earnings when things are great, maybe twenty five or thirty because they're expanding the lineup into uh, trucks, Cybertruck, and cheaper cars. But Tesla at twenty five or thirty billion dollars of a car business to me is more, and even including energy, it's not going to get that high of a multiple. You're looking at maybe you know six hundred billion max. But that's if they hit 30 billion in earnings or 20 billion in earnings or 700 billion. So my point is Tesla fairly valuing the car business right now and not assuming too much growth. You would fairly value Tesla maybe at four or 500 billion because you say they can make, you know, 15 billion normalized, let's call it in earnings, 30x ratio on that, 450 billion. So that's a kind of rough way to think about. It. And then, but why is Tesla 860 billion? Why did I buy shares today? Why is it still my number one holding if I think the core business is only worth half of what it's trading at? Because A, I think the core business is going to grow and eventually be worth a trillion with the semi truck and all that kind of stuff and energy. But so I think I'm, it'll justify it there and grow into its valuation. But then I think I'm, I'm the optionality of if robo taxis work, that's five trillion. If there's a 10% chance we think they're going to work, we should assign a $500 billion value, let's say roughly to it. So 500 billion plus 450 million, that's already 950 billion. That's already up from where we are today. So, and that's, and let's say Optimus is a $10 trillion opportunity with a 5% chance of success. So that's another 500 billion in value today. So my point is, is Tesla right now, the market is pricing in hundreds of billions of valuation of optionality of these trillion dollar robotic and AI and FSD projects. And that is uncharted territory. That is extremely fascinating. And that I that is why I believe there could be significant alpha in Tesla, because if you bet on the, the company and they execute on these FSD and Optimus initiatives, as they execute on those, they will get fully priced in and there will be massive upside as those go from just minor options in the price to being valued at trillions. So long story short is to say, I think te if you buy Tesla stock today, there's a big chunk of that valuation, which is an optionality that you get exposure to robo taxis and Optimus. And the question is, do you think it's a good enough buffer or not? And anyway, diving into other things that were said on the uh, conference call, the new vehicle, Tesla's cheapest thing, uh, Tesla is coming out with a cheaper vehicle first half of next year. This is huge because this is still on track. They don't want to Osborne out. This is the piece de resistance of Tesla. Everything that Tesla has been doing has boiled down to this cheaper car. And whether it's the cyber cab, whether it's like a smaller model three Y thing that you can buy, the point is Tesla is going to uh, announce a car that is going to be their new form factor that is going to mass, like this is going to be a game changer. This is the Toyota Camry EVs. This is still coming in less than a year. So that to me is why I look at 2% growth, eight times price sales, hundred times earnings. That makes no sense to a lot of people unless you understand that Tesla's on the cusp of leveraging all of their technology into this one model that is going to justify the market cap of the whole company and beyond. So that's coming early next year. Now, RoboTaxi event has been delayed to 1010. So I think at the RoboTaxi event, we're going to get the cheaper car showed, or maybe not because they don't want to kill sales, but they're going to show this like futuristic cab, a cyber cab that looks like a cyber truck that is kind of like a taxi. And someone even asked Elon if other vehicles would look like the cyber truck because it looks so badass. He said, I don't want to comment on future products. He didn't say no. So my take is they're coming out with, and these called it the cyber cab in the last conference call. How dumb do you got to be? Obviously, they're going to come out with a mini version of the Cybertruck that is looks like the most badass futuristic taxi ever. And that is what's coming out on 10-10, and it's going to be crazy. So I thought it was uh, funny that Elon got asked about FSD when the first robo-taxi ride would happen, because that's always what I ask people. And he said that it would be in 2020. He would be sh could be the end of this year, shocked if it wasn't 2025, but he always says that. Who knows? The flip side is... I've been using FSD V12 in Seattle. If you know me, you know I'm a grandma driver and hate FSD. Or don't hate FSD, but like I'm a very cautious FSD user. I'm like in the bucket of being a grandma who's cautious, who likes to drive slow. And I therefore am slow to adopt FSD. So if I give it a rave review, I think that means a lot to me personally. Um, and I love FSD. Like I use it constantly. It's so helpful in Seattle. I will never buy another car without it. Just going boom and just having the car sail away and take me to where I want to go without even, it's just, it's, it feels like a superpower. Uh, you know, my best homie, Julian, he lives down the block. He's also got a model Y We're we're FSDing all the time. It's just, you know, we couldn't even fathom not having it. So I, it's, and I feel like a lot of people don't understand that future who don't know how to use FSD. And so, um, I, I don't know. I kind of believe it. 
Optimus. Version one of Optimus is going to be coming out, um, being produced next year and being used in the Tesla factory, several thousand of them. So they're going to build several thousand of these robots, have them wander around the Tesla factory, try to get them to help do stuff, and then use all those learnings to have a production two for Optimus, which they're going to sell to other people in 2026. Remember, Optimus wasn't supposed to come out until 2027 when they unveiled it. I thought that meant it's going to be like 2030. Now we're talking about it's already existing, already going to be working in Tesla factories, already going to be on sale in 2026. This is a huge piece of news that people are missing. Optimus is ahead of schedule. Tesla's most groundbreaking, most profit-making potential product, most exciting, most impactful for changing how humanity works product and having an impact on the economy could be launching in less than 24 months and is massively ahead of schedule. That is very good news. That is a huge reason I'm very bullish on the company right now and I've been buying and holding my stock. Also... Elon Musk and XAI. Elon was asked about whether Tesla could invest in XAI. I think we need to. This XAI round that was floating around, if you were an accredited investor with the right connections, you got the opportunity to invest in XAI. 18 billion pre-money, 6 billion raised, 24 post-money valuation. They needed to set up a new structure to incentivize the right engineers to do this. That's why they couldn't build it within Tesla. It's a bummer Tesla investors don't get exposure to this AI. But Grok and the XAI team, frankly, is using a lot of Tesla's resources and the infrastructure of you know being installed in every Tesla and every Tesla bot. And I think it would just be so much synergies and frankly, just kind of like a full circle fairness for giving, you know, we couldn't make XAI within Tesla, but we can still give Tesla investors exposure by letting them buy in. So let's let them do that. And instead of making it only available to accredited investors, we're going to wire the money in two days and there's a massive deadline and you got to fill out all this paperwork and you don't know what you're doing and it's a liquid investment and only rich VCs get to do it. Fuck that. Let's let every Tesla shareholder get the same exposure to X by Tesla investing in X. I love that idea. The Tesla shareholders are going to approve it. We're going to vote it. We're moving to, this is why we're moving to Texas. So we can do more shit like this. And I'm beefing because I had this whole idea to like, for Tesla to invest in Starlink a long time, or I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. I, there was an idea to, for Tesla to invest in Starlink that didn't pan out. And I think the ma main reason why Tesla and SpaceX have been kept so separate is because of governance issues and like shareholder approvals in that. So there's a lot of lawyer BS to get through to allow Tesla investors to invest in XAI. But I think that gets easier when Tesla moves to Texas. And I think we could actually pull this off. And instead of letting just the v the greedy VCs do it, Elon, let's let all the Tesla shareholders who bin back and you get exposure to XAI. And Tesla has 30 billion in cash, give 5 billion to XAI, put it on a $35 billion valuation. Everyone gets a markup. Um, Tesla investors now have, you know, 15 to 20% of this AI startup, which is competing with OpenAI, that's going to instantly rewrite Tesla stock into the AI narrative in camp. Anyway, that's my take. I am all for Tesla investing in XAI. I think we should put, put I'm going to be pushing for that. I'm pushing for it. Anyway, um, the last thing I will say, so I think there my so th this has kind of been bubbling up, but I think a huge catalyst is brewing for Tesla stock um, in the potentially. And it is another automotive company licensing their software and FSD. And this is a huge deal that will get announced. Now, you just saw Volkswagen invest in Rivian. After thinking and spending a lot of time on that, the real reason why is VW can't build software. None of these car companies are computer companies. They are desperate for the operating stack. Everybody saw Volkswagen partner with Rivian and immediately is going, we didn't want to partner with Tesla, who's not only just doing the vehicle software, but doing the self-driving software. I bet Tesla is in discussions with Ford, GM, with everybody to, for them to license this. This is going to be huge for Tesla's brand. It's going to take a lot of the risk away. They're going to help commercialize it, help get the governments to get on board. It's going to get more miles going. It's going to, I think, whichever automotive company partners with Tesla first is going to be one of the few to survive. And I think it's going to be Ford. But anyway, that totally may not happen. But I do think, and they keep mentioning on the conference calls, they're in discussions with OEMs. If that gets announced, that is going to be a huge catalyst for Tesla stock. And I just think Ford is the perfect partner to do it, uh, to license Tesla's FSD software. Um, and anyway, that is my... Uh, First take on Tesla earnings, you know, um, we are kind of in this lull between two growth periods as they're on the cusp of announcing a cheaper model and the robo taxi. I think if you're invested in the company right now, you're thinking long term and you're you're understanding that we're going to have another, you know, slower growth for the next two quarters or three quarters until these cheaper models kick in and the robo taxi kicks in. And when that does, things will get crazy again and the growth is going to pick up and I think the stock's going to accelerate. Um, 
and I could see it all coming. And in the meantime, we have energy providing this booming tailwind of growth that's now almost material to the company. So I love that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is Galley, and I'm, bro, I've been, I've been, I've, I'm, I've been long test stock since 2011. So shout out to Elon and the team. Um, you know, I'm still long Tesla stock. It's still my number one position. I literally bought more shares today. So um, I'm going to make an update on my G2Milli video uh, account soon. I haven't stopped that. I'm still doing it. It's like 18 Gs. I'm up like 40% um, crushing the market. Kind of hype. So I'll put an update on that and let you know. Anyway, talk to you soon. Love y'all. Um, hope you liked the episode. Peace.